Hi, how's it going? My name's Bronson and this is my 2001 Chevy Astro van. I bought this about three months ago in Colorado. I live here in Utah, so it was like a overnight trip <laughs> and it was really fun. Uh, got the van and I tore everything out. Absolutely everything. The lady before me had a build in there. I didn't like it. It was pretty basic. I didn't like it, so I took it home and I absolutely gutted the whole thing. If you're interested in that video, uh, I have it one of my first videos on the channel so feel free to go check that out uh, you can kind of see compare and contrast compared to what it is now but uh, I'm going to give you the full tour today we'll see the whole thing inside outside all the things I've done uh, yeah it's cool I'm pretty proud of it so let's dive in so starting out with the outside there's a few uh, things that stick out on the van uh, number one is the yellow paint job personally I love it Honestly, I think it stands out and I love it. Um, but yeah, this bad boy is Rhino Lined Yellow. It's off brand Rhino Line, I think, as far as I can tell. I didn't paint it, uh, I bought it this way. But yeah, this thing is scratch proof. It's awesome. And so far, it's actually came in handy when building the van because, you know, I've hit it with a 2x4 here or knocked it with a piece of metal there and nothing. It's been <laughs> fantastic. So uh, the one thing I have changed though is the paint job on the bumper and stuff anything basically anything on here black i painted before it was yellow the thing was like a yellow bus as you can see this makes quite a bit bit of difference i painted the bumper the grill the tires the windows the handles i painted all that stuff and let me tell you it looks a lot better right now before it looks kind of like a little girly van i guess i don't know how to what, how to put that but uh, now I think it looks a little more mean. It looks cooler, but I like it better this way. As you can see, I did a pretty good paint job like I said before, but uh, I've also got new headlights in there. These things were like 60 bucks with a wiring harness, and let me tell you, compared to the old incandescent light bulbs I had in there before, these things are awesome. Super bright white LED lights, which I'm sure other people don't like it, but for me, I love it. <laughs> It's way better, and especially with the high beams on. Ooh, yeah. Over here, we have got some all-terrain off-road tires. I didn't put those on. Again, it came with the van, and it also has an 8-inch lift. Uh, that's what the lady told me. She also installed the lift. I think it's more like 6 inches. Uh, but, yeah, it's a Journey's off-road lift, and it does. It really lifts the van a lot, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted this van is because it was lifted you know six or eight inches whatever it is and that gives me a little more a uh, little more opportunity to go off-roading which I love that stuff and especially getting to more remote camping spots it was a must so if you can read this you can tell it says Astro all drive that's the other thing I wanted with my van is a uh, either four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive and since any van it, other than like the Mitsubishi Mitsubishi Delica it's either all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive. Uh, I went with all-wheel drive because that was the easiest option. And the Astro van was perfect because it's all-wheel drive. So I've got an all-wheel drive van with an eight-inch lift. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Uh, coming up here, this is my 270-degree awning. I made this myself back when I used to have a truck and I put it on my truck. And I probably won't open it today, but uh, if you keep watching, you'll see it in future videos. Go camping and stuff. 
it's just a 270 degree awning. It starts here and it folds out and wraps around to the back of the van. And on the arms I have on there, I've installed some LED lights that light up the area really well. Personally, it looks way better on the van and it works better on the van. So that's an awesome upgrade I fortunately already did. Other than that, on this side, I also have some LED light bars. I have this one, this one, which are, I think they're two by two. They're just little ones on the side, but I've got a full 42 incher on the front and a thinner, I think it's a 36 or 32 incher on the back. And they are super bright. And let me tell you, I got a, well, I have 360 degree lights on this thing now. I've taken it up actually this canyon uh, in the dark and went up and down the road. Ooh, it was bright, so bright. Don't regret that at all. A lot of people made fun of me, like my friends and family, for putting so many light bars on there. It was worth it, and I'd do it again. I would like to add more, actually. So, on this side over here, I got you know more light bars, and I got this back one. You can probably see it a little better now, maybe not. But the main thing I got on this side is my ladder. I custom made this ladder out of some uh, electrical conduit EMT. It's one inch, and I bent it with a bender and then welded it together and painted it and it turned out awesome i didn't really know what kind of ladder to get but this thing's perfect and as you can see she's bouncy sturdy but getting up on top of the van this thing was way worth the time and money i spent trying to build it and actually it only cost me like 30 bucks i think 30 bucks is all it costs coming up here on the roof rack i've got a cut in fan Here's that light bar. And then I've got a whole custom roof rack. This thing came with a van, but uh, when I bought it, there were some problems. First of all, it was yellow, <laughs> just like the rest of the van. And second, it was bolted down everywhere. As you can see, I went through and did some pretty basic welds on it. Um, the problem with it being bolted is every time I went over a bump, the thing would rattle like crazy so <laughs> uh, yeah as you can imagine the rattling would was annoying as heck so i welded it all and now it's really sturdy compared to what it was before and then here is my 200 watts of solar this is pretty much a perfect fit for my van i got a little bit of spare room but other than the solar panel i've got as you can see under there this little bracket the tilt bracket that way i can tilt it up towards the sun I actually haven't used the tilt bracket yet, but uh, I plan on doing it eventually, probably on longer camping trips. Now that I've showed you most of the outside, time to hop onto the inside. And here's where the hard work paid off, inside the van. So over here, I've got my bed, I've got my kitchen over here, and I don't know if you can see it from where you're at, but over here is most of my storage. Well, between under the cabinet and everything, but I got some storage over here, so I'll take you on a little tour. But looking around, I did full cedar paneling on the entire walls and ceiling of the van, and I used some of these nice puck lights to install in there. Um, I also put some of that cedar paneling that I used on the ceiling on my, uh, my doors here which I think turned out excellent. So I'm six feet tall, so I ended up making my bed six feet long. Makes sense, right? <laughs> but uh, I think it's about 28 inches wide, which is perfect. Uh, I was a little, actually a little worried when I first started making this that my bed wasn't gonna be quite right. And I was like, ah, what if it's too short? Or not short, what if it's not wide enough? And I was legit worried because it was hard to test fit the actual like 20 I mean I laid down and like measured my shoulders and everything but I just couldn't be sure until I actually built it so I was pretty sure like 28 inches was going to work so I went with that I was really close to going to 25 inches but I ended up sticking with the 28 and I built it and it's exactly what I needed like I don't think it could have been better so I'm super happy with that over here I've got some kitchen store uh kitchen area where I can put a cutting board down and slice and then coming back here from there it probably looks a little crowded but I got my stove this is a propane 
stove with an electric start. Uh, I've used it twice now, I want to say, to cook a meal. It works excellent. This is a Thermomate, and it's awesome. Use it to cook twice. And then coming over here, I've got my sink with a little water pump, a little water faucet. Uh, I could have got a full faucet. I noticed a lot of van builds have that, but, you know, I didn't really need one. There's no reasoning for it. I like this. It's perfect. And this is just a nice little sink, especially for this small van. There's the sponges and towels, and that's a different controller. But there's kind of my kitchen area, and I've also got lights underneath there, which that is super bright. Super nice when I'm trying to cook because it lights everything up really well. And then coming up here, I've got some of my storage up above. I've got it mostly filled up. I haven't knocked down the details yet, if you want to call it that. But I kind of just got all my soap and sponges and utensils and plates and whatnot stored up there. Over here, I have got my, uh, my fan. This thing is awesome. And like I said before, the lady uh, that I bought this from installed it. Thank goodness, because I hate cutting holes in, in the roof of my van. It's, I had to do it for some of the electrical work. And, oh, <laughs> it's so, dude, it sucks. It's like, it's, it's, un, in, it's, you can't go back from that. It's irreversible. Underneath my kitchen is my electrical system. I'm going to flip that on. And I got a nice bright light under there. And you can see the chaos. Actually, this all makes pretty good sense. And I just made an electrical video about this explaining everything. But, uh, yeah, basically I have a charge controller that charges my batteries down here from solar or from my alternator when the car is running. Uh, most of this is a DC setup, but I also have my inverter right there that gives me 120 volts right here, and I also wired it all the way over here to my storage, which I can show you in a second. But yeah, I've got two 100 amp hour batteries. These are sealed. Well, maybe they're gel, I don't know. My battery, this inverter told, tells me that they're, uh, they're sealed. Slash AGM, so that's what I'll roll with. But yeah, 200 amp hours. They're connected in parallel. I have 12 volts, and then over here, I guess I can show you. Close the door. Over here, I've got all my food and pots and pans, which it's a mess right now. I haven't organized it yet, but <laughs> there you go. And I probably should block that off from my electrical side, but. That's what it looks like right now. Still future renovations to come. Underneath my bed, I also have storage. It's about the last two feet of my bed is storage under here. And I just made this panel to access it. I've got a little light. And again, I haven't been able to organize this yet because I'm trying to learn how the van works. So it's a mess. But I got tons of storage. And this isn't super accessible. I mean, clearly I have a big door right here, but uh, most likely I'll keep a lot of my like tools and jumper cables and things I don't use every day, but I'll need, I'll keep them in here. So this is my storage area for the van. Uh, I have a ton of outlets in here, <laughs> if you can tell. I've got 120 volts AC power, and then I have eight USB ports, which is probably overdoing it, but that's how many came in the pack. Well, there's four ports, four outlets, but two ports per outlet. So there's four outlets, eight ports. Four came in the pack, so I decided let's install all four, right? Why not? <laughs> so I got plenty of USB power in there. Uh, and then I've got over here a 12 volt port, like it for a cigarette lighter or something like that. And then, like I said, the 120 volts. And this will kind of be my charging area. I'll keep like lights, my camera, laptop, phone, iPad, all the good stuff, right? I'll, I'll keep all the electronics probably up here. 
Moving down to this area, this is just a cheap car net off of Timu. Um, like three bucks. But in there, I don't have anything in there right now. But I plan on keeping most of my clothes that I'll use often. Because clearly that's not enough room to store all of my clothes. It's not very much room at all. So that'll probably be the stuff that I'll use most often. And then the other stuff I can, I don't know, I'll figure out somewhere to put it. <laughs> but that's my clothes. And then down here will probably be more of like stuff that gets dirty often. Um, right now, got a pair of shoes. That's probably where I'll keep a lot of my shoes and stuff that uh, is a little dirty. But that's kind of the plan for those. It'll probably change once I get going because I don't know. I'm not, I haven't, I've camped in this twice. I don't know how this works yet. I built it, but if you guys know, it, it can be confusing. <laughs> so that's my storage for the most part. The Astrovan's kind of small, so this is the most storage I can make out of the dang thing. I wish I had more, but, you know, I think I made pretty good use of the storage that I did make. Yeah. That's right. I made a swivel seat in the Astro Van. Custom made this bad boy. So that's also a video. <laughs> if you want to know how to make a swivel seat in an Astro Van for like $150, this is your swivel seat. There's a whole story behind that. If you watch the video, you'll see, but that's a good swivel seat if you can make stuff. So check out the video. Other than uh, this swivel seat in the front seat, here are the switches to my light bars. And I also have one for the cab right here, which I made it a three-way switch. That way I could turn it off and back there if I wanted. But yeah, there it is. Way brighter because, well, that one didn't work, so I'm sure it's brighter than that one. Who knows, actually. <laughs> But here's my front seat. Um, pretty close up and tight to that backing. I actually put the seat all the way back and then found where it was comfortable for me to lean my back. And then I built this to match that. That way I could maximize as much storage as I could. Uh, I installed this little stereo. It's nice because it has a backup camera. Figured I'd probably need that for the van at some point. And then it has Apple CarPlay, which is super nice because I like listening to music. Coming up here in the driver's seat, I have got, well, 119,000 miles on the van now. I actually bought it um, down at 118,000. But, you know, that trip from, uh, that trip from Colorado added quite a few miles right off the bat. Plus, I've taken it camping a few times. These doors don't stay open with the crap. Especially that freaking door. But, here's the back of the van. Uh, as you can see, over here I've got my propane. And I got my water and my uh, water pump as well. But uh, yeah, I got, I think it's five gallons. Yeah, I got five gallons of water back here. And I think it's a one gallon propane tank. So it fits pretty good. I'll show you close up here in a second because I know it's hard to see from back there. But then on this side, we have got a full length, four foot long drawer. Booyah. This thing is awesome. This is like a ton of storage in here, and it's fortunately, well, there you go. It's locking. <laughs> you got to pull it out. But yeah, it's locking, and apparently it's support, supposed to support like 500 pounds. So technically I could sit on this. I don't dare, and I'm not going to. That's my choice. But it's got tons of storage in here. This thing is awesome, and... It slides right in there and it locks so it can't come back out. It's perfect. That way when I'm going on bumpy roads and stuff, it's not jamming the back of my uh, my van door. So definitely worth getting the locking. Uh, on the side of that, 
I just got this open space. It was kind of hard to use this space, honestly. It was hard to utilize it. So I just left it open. I figured I'd always have muddy stuff and things I didn't want to play with while I was on the road. And I needed a spot for that. So I figured I could shove stuff in there. That or my fishing pole. I went camping twice and one of the times I went fishing and I just put my fishing pole in there. And it was actually pretty nice. So you never know, maybe that's what I'll use it for. <laughs> but I also on the back, other than that jazz, I've got a, a hitch, which is pretty nice. I can tow a boat or a four-wheeler trailer or I don't know, a few things here and there. But if I don't tow anything, I could always put a rack back here for storage, which I'm looking forward to. So here's a little better look down here. Kind of looks like a mess, as it is. I haven't figured it out like the rest of it, but here's just another one of those mesh nettings. Just got some lids back here. And then all my plumbing. I'm not a plumber. I don't know how to plumb, so don't judge me. But I uh, got the sink, and here's my drain coming down which I don't have a gray water tank. It just goes out of the van. I'll show you that in a second. Then here's my five gallons of fresh water storage. Uh, when I park, I can just, you know, put that in there and then I got water. And then here's my water pump clear back here. This is a set you can buy from Amazon, the water pump and the faucet. They come together, I think it was like, 40 or 60 dollars one of the two but yeah and then here is my propane it's a nice little uh, size for the van plenty of storage in there with that being that size a little better look at that storage as you can see it goes all the way back there four feet back it's the same length as this and then uh yeah got some little panels here for some more storage so that's pretty much the van guys i hope you Kind of enjoyed seeing my build, but uh, it's not done yet. It's not done. There's still plenty of stuff to do. Number one, top on my list right now, is get an emblem for the front. If you look, well, if you remember, that whole grill does not have a Chevy emblem, and it just looks funky. I need I need an emblem on there. That's top on my list right now, oddly enough. But besides that, I got plenty of plans for the van between adding some more stuff on here you guys can see the videos later if you follow along, but I got a few fun little projects in the works to add to the exterior of the van mostly. And uh, and then I'm just going on adventures. So if you want to see me go on adventures, make sure to stick around because I've got one coming up right after this video. It was my first trip in the van and it was chaos. I found out the all-wheel drive isn't working right now. I've taken steps to fix it. I'm going to get it fixed. And if I can't fix it, it this bad boy's going four-wheel drive. I'll put it in a new transfer case. I don't care. But you'll see the video if you stick around. It's chaos. It's actually pretty fun. I'm pretty excited to release it. But uh, yeah, stick around for the stick around for some more content, guys, because this van is gonna go full travel, hopefully by January. That's my goal. I want to travel around Utah for probably some of the fall and early winter and then hit the road and who knows where it'll take me but yeah stick around make sure to subscribe so you can see my content and watch this van get complete and go on some sick adventures i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching